morning everyone welcome back to another video it is bright and early today it is just gone seven o'clock in the morning and i've come outside to do a little bit of a garden walk my morning garden walk that i do every single day and i have my morning cup of coffee I have an iced coffee today even though it's a little bit chilly this morning um, but i thought i would do just a little bit of a garden update with you all um, just because so much has changed in the garden just in the last few weeks there's so much blooming down in the flower farm there's things going on in the cottage garden that you can see behind here and to be honest I've also found it really difficult to make um, some content lately including filming what I get up to in the garden because I have just been so busy and on a little bit of a time crunch for a few things that I'll just I'll walk around and it's easier if I just show you what I've been doing but yeah filming definitely does take up a lot of time um, but for myself and also for you I wanted to document what the garden is looking like at the start of September uh, this is kind of a really pivotal point for me because it's when I'm starting a lot of my spring and summer seeds so I want to remember what the garden is kind of looking like right now so that in future I can look back and know what time of the year flowers are blooming uh, and what's kind of happening in terms of all of the plants what I'm sowing for seeds just to kind of have a little bit of a video diary for me so I'm gonna grab my cup of coffee and we're gonna walk down to the flower farm first I think this probably isn't going to be a very long video just because I've got work today and I've got lots on and a market to prep for this weekend but I'll turn you around and just give you a bit of an overview on what's happening right now because there is a lot of beauty happening in the garden so just for perspective the house is up there the cottage garden is there this is kind of my first row of flowers that starts like the flower farm area of the property where i have a bed of straw flowers and then panning over here this is where i have my cool season crops um, so i have my ranunculus and anemones now in and amongst the beauty there is a lot of non-beauty including powdery mildew or some kind of mildew and it's been pretty bad to the point where I actually haven't been selling a lot of these flowers which is fun because I need to be <laughs> uh, I'm gonna show you and yeah we're just gonna have a look so you can see here on all of the leaves there's this kind of like white mildewy presence even on the flower buds the flowers themselves aren't affected they actually look really nice um, it's just the leaves and overall it can lead to really unhealthy plants so what I've been doing is things like our spraying neem oil I've been giving them a really harsh trim back look you can see on this stem here how bad it is yuck I'm gonna come through and give it another neem oil spray today it's diluted in water which is kind of like a natural fungicide um, it seemed to work the first application I did I think I need to do it like every few days though so yeah unfortunately my ranunculus or at least this bed is kind of a flop um, the plants down here are looking a little better but still affected uh, which is really sad because these are one of my favorite flowers they are really beautiful though and I'm considering maybe even drying some of them because um, I feel like the the mildew might not affect dried flowers we'll see how we go I'll keep you updated but they are really really stunning I really wish we didn't have this powdery mildew and it's basically because we're getting cooler nights right now but then really warm and a bit humid days creates just the best climate for any kind of fungal diseases in the garden but although these are really looking sad, my anemones, they're actually all closed up now uh, because the sun hasn't hit them, but they'll start to open up soon. These have been doing amazing and they're finally at the stem length. You can kind of see all the way down that I can actually use in wrapped bouquets, which was my struggle before because they were just so short that I could just only add them into jam jar arrangements, which I like, but I much prefer working with bigger arrangements you can just add more in and it's just it's a lot more fun to play with so these are all looking really great they don't seem to be affected by the powdery mildew um, I've been making sure to give these a probably about a weekly fertilize with Charlie carp just a liquid fish fertilizer uh, and they've really been responding to that so I think 
key to anemones is giving them regular food and uh, deadheading as well. So coming through, like I can see this one here, is on its way out. It's wanting to actually produce seed. So I'll come through and chop this off and you can see the remnants of the deadheading that I've already done. Um, but yeah, overall, really, really happy with these. I will overlay some clips here of just what they look like when they're a little bit more open because they are so stunning. My favorites are probably the ones with the white outer petals and then purple centers. They look so, so beautiful. As well as there's some kind of double pinks in this mix here that got thrown in. They just have a little bit more fluffy petals. Uh, but you've got also the classic reds in this mix. The purples just are so beautiful and striking. Um, and there's also some really nice soft salmon colors in here and apricot tones that those are my favorite. I'm not like the biggest fan of the bright colors, even though they sell really well, but I have a certain soft spot for those more muted, soft kind of colors. All right, we'll get my coffee and we'll go down to the flower farm area where I have most of my beds. I'm yet to actually do a count of how many beds I have and I can see down there there's actually some wood hens or swamp hens, whatever they're called. I don't know if you can see them walking around there. They dig up and eat my seedlings. They will just dig the seedling up, like pick, like pick it out and then um, eat all of the bugs underneath. So I need to keep an eye on them. I should have done this walk around a little bit earlier because the sun has now come out, but I'll turn you around and um, show you what I have in at the flower farm. Looking at it right now, it is bringing me so much joy. It's starting to look like how I thought it would look like. <laughs> I'll try and find, if I can, some overlays or at least just some photos of what this looks like. When we started, it was just grass and then I had maybe like a few garden beds. That I had started to grow veggies in and I've slowly expanded and expanded it and it's actually starting to look like a little farm now and that has been one of my life goals is to have a farm <laughs> so yeah I'm very proud of myself and Scott for helping out because he does help out a lot uh, in the garden of what we've created and seeing it now actually blooming is really really beautiful so let me actually show you and I'll turn you around and share what I'm growing so in this area there is about seven eight meter beds and about three four meter beds i'm yet to extend those to the eight meters and you can see way down the back there i have some tarp that i'm further extending this so yeah there's a little bit of everything in here and i've had to work around certain things like there's an old dead citrus tree there another one there so i'm doing the best i can in this space um but we'll start up here the first row I have some feverfew that has started to kind of like clump up again. This is the one I took cuttings from. It's starting to kind of get clumps, which will then turn into flower heads, which is nice. Got some pincushion flowers here or scabiosa that are looking pretty sad, to be honest. They're getting a lot of this um, black spots on them and the, and the leaves are yellowing a little bit. And this could be due to the low chloride that we have in our soil. I'm not too worried though. Um, I can see some of them starting to bud up here um, because it's not like a really um, expensive crop. The seeds were pretty cheap, but obviously I would like some. <laughs> Next to those, I have some um, snapdragons that just, they kept on growing and self-seeded from last year. This is most likely the Costa variety. I have a lot of these planted in or Tetra, not too sure. And then yesterday I didn't film because um, the wind has been horrendous lately, which is why I'm filming this so early in the morning. But um, I finished planting this bed of veggies. So you would have seen me in another video plant a bed of English uh, spinach here. You can see they're starting to grow a little bit more. They did struggle a little bit with the transplant, but that's really to be expected. And then down in this bed here, I've planted some Corroda, I think that's how you say it, Corroda carrots. They're like short and stumpy carrots because I'm not sure how well carrots are gonna grow in our fairly clay soil. Uh, and then I've also planted some 
bush beans down here. The variety is called Strike. They're a green bush bean and they're my favorite uh, to grow. So I wanted to plant some of these in now just so I can start kind of like a succession of green beans. So you really can't see anything in there because I just planted the seeds yesterday, but I have three rows of carrots and two rows of beans in here. This row is all empty, although I do have cosmos seedlings coming up everywhere. So I'm debating whether or not to just keep them in here. Probably not though, because I want this for veggies. There we go, that was easy. <laughs> what I might do though is maybe transplant some of them. And then the next half of this row, I have some column stock. This one was just way too crazy for me to harvest, but oh, it's so, so beautiful and smells delicious. The stock has very, it's like a clovey spiced scent. It's really beautiful, but very strong. And I've harvested most of this already, but I do have a few uh, that are here. I have, so this is the, these are singles and then that is the double stock so you can see what they're going to be when you actually seed them when the seedlings come up i didn't worry too much about putting doubles only doubles in uh, because i could see that i had a lot of singles but i have a lighter salmon color i have this pinky it's really kind of like a baby pink color and then i have uh, these which are the they're something blue I'll put it on the screen unless I can find the tag they are miracle blue stock and then I think the pink one was called Pacific pink and I have harvested these they will get another flush but the stems will be really small really short you can kind of see the plants trying to send out shoots uh, but I'm actually not going to let them. I'm going to tear all of these up and plant snapdragons in here. Usually you'll just get one single um, flower with column stock. That's kind of why it's called column stock because you get one big column coming up rather than some of the other branching varieties. Next row, I have lots of status. So I have apricot status. I've planted a whole few, I've planted a whole little half bed here. Of some more apricot status that was so ready to go on the ground that it had started flowering and I'm gonna have to come through and trim these because I don't want them to flower I want them to put energy into uh, growing growing roots I have some purple status if you're ever wanting to grow status I would highly recommend growing bright purple sells really great at markets so I've got quite a bit of that uh, and then I have more status that I planted the other day this is uh, a mix of status so it'll just be kind of all my mixed uh, fresh to dry bunches but they're super tiny now but they'll be fine and I might get some blooms from those but these have all the ones that are blooming now have all been in here since uh, last year so they're doing pretty well and then at the end I have my <laughs> messy, messy um, bed of cornflowers that have self-seeded themselves and are just growing a little bit wild, which is fine because I'm just taking whatever I can get from these. Um, finally, the bowerbirds have stopped taking all of my blue flowers, these beautiful blue cornflowers. So I can finally harvest these for my rainbow bunches that I've been making. Um, I've also got some of the pink ones there. So I'll probably start picking these and drying them for bath salts soon. But this bed here, I promise you it's a bed. This is my next job that I need to work on is getting this grass out. Is uh, I just have some more status here. It's a little hard to see with the sun, but um, this lilac light purple is one of my favorites. I have actually sowed some more seeds of this. Um, and I find the white is really useful. It kind of acts as um, like baby's breath so I don't plant baby's breath I just use status to kind of have that soft um, pop of white in bouquets so that was that row there and then moving on I have all of my straw flowers I have a whole row so I'm not going to walk down um, but some of which are actually budding up starting to get some flowers 
and they're kind of all at different um, stages so I've kind of done like a little bit of a succession for those the next row um, is a lot of stock so I have some dwarf stock here that I was just experimenting with to see if I could use them in jam jar arrangements and um, they are like the right length um, I have more in my cottage garden but you can kind of see it starting to branch out a bit so I might use these and then the rest is column stock mainly the miracle blue and um, this is all pacific pink here I think so all of these I'm going to be harvesting for the market on the weekend but you can see again this is a difference between the double stock the flowers have double petals versus the single where they're actually all just single flowers so these have been saving me in terms of flowers right now um, I have some more down the back there so these are going to be for the market this weekend got some snapdragons here a mixture of the tetra and uh, the costa finally starting to see some buds which is nice so I've got those there and then some more column stock down the end I don't know what variety this is uh, this is more of the pink but probably more of the blue because I don't label that well <laughs> the rest of the beds I have a bed of ranunculus here another bed of ranunculus these have started to bud up and they're not actually impacted at all by the powdery mildew I think because they just get a lot more sun here so hopefully these will kind of save me a bit um, and I have been feeding these I need to do it today but I'm, I've been feeding these weekly with the Charlie carp fish fertilizer and then I've got another half little quarter bed of ranunculus down here and some more stock which is just so so beautiful I do have some raspberries here that are starting to wake up and behind there is a bed of feverfew slash a bed of grass because it's actually kind of taking over here so that's not fun and then all of this will be future garden beds probably zinnias and sunflowers down here the last bed here is quite a large bed and this is all larkspur that has started to almost flower this is my very first time growing larkspur so I um, don't really have too much to say about it <laughs> other than it's looking a lot healthier than it did when I planted it it was looking really horrible so I think this is going to need another feed of Charlie Carp just to give it a bit of a boost it's always great when you can see flowers starting to send up stems to give them a feed just because they're exerting a lot more energy to produce the flower so that's what I'm probably gonna do and this is why I do the garden walks to kind of see what needs to be done each day or each week in the garden just to get a little bit of an idea so that is an overview of the flower farm area I guarantee you in another two weeks it's going to dramatically change so if you would like more regular tours on how things are changing just let me know just because i find that's where i get a lot of information on when to plant things is actually from other people and other youtubers i always have a bit of a rough idea but then i see that someone's planted something and i've totally forgotten about it so yeah i hope this can serve as a little bit of both inspiration and a reminder to plant certain things I suppose so now we're up here next to the cottage garden and I'm probably not going to go through all of this just because I've done a my last tour that I did it's pretty much exactly the same um, but I will share that over on this side of the garden I have started another big no dig bed that I'm going to be making I have started it with just placing some cardboard down and on the top of that I have placed some horse manure um, I'm gonna do this for the whole of this bed coming out to these plant guards here and then place some sugarcane mulch on top and or potentially just 
we're going to get a big load of mulch in basically which is going to be a hard few days work but um the whole garden really needs a good mulch so i'll be ordering that maybe for next week depending on how much work i have um, or maybe the week after i need the markets to kind of slow down a little bit <laughs> to um, dedicate some time to mulching but all of this is going to be mulched and plants in here some things that are happening in the cottage garden the sun has come out now but um that's okay we'll have to deal with that <laughs> my roses have really started waking up this is one of my david austin roses i love rose foliage as well i think it's one of the most beautiful leaves they just look so pretty when they're when they have all of the morning dew on them and um this one is called grace it's my favorite <laughs> it's like a beautiful apricot rose um, I do have a few others that have started waking up as well, like here, I think this is Jubilee Celebration. I've also started to kind of tidy up the garden a bit by mulching and getting things ready and prepped for spring. This is the other dwarf stock down here I was talking about. Uh, it's nice and little, but very cute and great for little jam jar arrangements and it was more just to brighten up this cottage garden here which is the whole point of this is to be something that's beautiful and can grow a little bit of food like some greens down there uh, but also provide habitat for birds and the little birds lately have been really loving this little garden i can see a lot of them flying around right now they kind of and you can hear them too they've been taking refuge in here uh, in the afternoons which has been so so beautiful to hear and have them around is so precious to me so there's not really too much else happening in here um well, i mean there is there's a lot happening but <laughs> there's not too much i can share that i haven't shared before my rhubarb is looking really great as usual this is just such a great climate to grow rhubarb um it's just looking so so nice and I'm going to make some apple rhubarb desserts, I think. One thing that I did notice was my aquilegia flowers. Oh, have started flowering. My aquilegia has started flowering, is what I'm trying to say. I planted these last year and they did nothing. And now they've started to flower. Which is really exciting. And I've never seen, I've never grown aquilegia before. But I think they'll be beautiful and I might just keep these here for me. This is my little like fairy garden area next to the Malaluca Incarna, which is my favorite green to use for uh, bouquets. It's just, it's just so beautiful. You have to, you have to buy it. You have to get it if you ever see it. I've got my aquilegia, my rhubarb here for all of the green little frogs that we have they love living in here and a little bit of a magical garden over there that i'm going to be updating in another video so this is my little magical area of the garden where the fairies live apparently <laughs> so that's a little look of what the cottage garden is looking like we do have some strawberries that have started too so i might have to come through and net some of these so that we can actually get some um, and the birds and the bandicoots don't take them but that's very exciting uh, and I do have lots of plans to um, plant my tomatoes in here where that purple flush is over there that's all the borage I'm going to be planting tomatoes in there once I kind of chop and drop all of that as well as probably uh, a few more cucumbers as well in here because they grew really well last year so that is about it for today's video. I will include a few overlays of just some of the seedlings that I've sown. So yesterday I was really busy and I started uh, some zinnia seeds uh, as well as some sunflowers, just doing a little tester, just a little tester to see how well they germinate. I've also sown heaps more snapdragons because I love snapdragons and I'm going to see how long in the season I can grow them. I've also started some more dahlia seeds, uh, hollyhock, I'm slowly waking up some dahlia tubers so I'll share about all of that in another video uh, and I have heaps of seedlings on the go so I have heaps of snapdragon seedlings sweet williams that really need to get in the ground lots more fever few as well as a few other leftover seedlings like some straw flowers yarrow and I think that is about it but over the next few weeks I'm going to be sowing 
heaps of zinnia seeds, heaps of cosmos, um, working on all of my dahlia tubers, starting some marigolds um, and all of my celosia and amaranth, all of those beautiful summer crops I'm very excited for and I can't wait to grow. The whole list of my kind of spring and summer flower seeds that I'm sowing is in a previous video that I'll link down below if you want to check that out with it's got all of the names and photos as well if you if you want a little bit of inspiration for your garden but I'm gonna head off now I have made a mental note of things that I need to get done after we did this little morning walk but thank you so much for joining me I'll leave you with a few beautiful clips from the garden and I am gonna go and get started with my day so thank you so much for watching this video there'll be another one coming out either in a few days or next weekend of a market vlog um, so I need to go and prep for that but I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world and until my next one happy gardening everyone bye